What's up? This is Matt with GearZombie.com, and today we're going to dial in some high gain patches on the Line 6 Helix. <laughs> Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is I've been looking at a lot of different forum posts, Facebook posts, YouTube comments, where people are saying lots of things like it's difficult to dial in high gain tones on the Helix. Now, for me, coming from an Axe FX, uh, right now I use the Axe FX 2. I use the Ultra before that. Um, I've got some limited miles on a Kemper. Uh, I would say that the Line 6 Helix is probably the easiest uh, piece of equipment to dial in um, a high gain tone with a minimal amount of effort. So I'm going to dial in a whole bunch of tones for you guys. I'm probably going to spread them out over a couple videos here. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm using my trusty RG550. This is an original, not a reissue. Yeah, so, yeah. This is loaded with a Seymour Duncan SH2N in the humbucking, or in the bridge position. I catch a lot of heat for that because that's a jazz pickup. But uh, this is what it came with when I bought it. And I love it so I'll never change it. But uh, I think I'm tuned down to, I think I'm dropped to B. Something like that. So one of the cool things that Line 6 does uh, with the Helix is you can either just pick an amp and uh, a cab separately, or you have amp and cab blocks. The amp and cab block, they've actually gone ahead and paired up uh amps and cabs to their to their mate uh let's do the rectifier because everybody likes the rectifiers the cali rectifier rectifier all right let's see what we got out of the box <laughs> sounds about like a rectifier to me kind of flubby let's uh for starters, let's get some presents in. First things I do with pretty much any high gain, especially a model. There you go. Bye bye. Bye bye, Buzz. Now we still have a uh, open and close issue. Now, one thing I will say. One thing I will say, and that is again. Maybe what we'll actually do is we'll just put this decay up. Try and take that pop out of there. Now, the cab that they've paired it with is the Cali V30, which, if memory serves, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if memory serves, that's just based on a regular Mesa 412. Um, I'm going to assume, since it says V30, that it's loaded with the Celestian Vintage 30s. But um, this is not the oversized cab, unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> One thing I will say if you're having a hard time dialing in tones, aside from selecting your cabinet, um, in my opinion, probably the most drastic thing that can change your sound uh, is changing what mic sim is on there. In this case, kind of liking that. Bright. Don't like that. Really don't like that. Let's go back to that 84. 84. 
too bad. You double track that out. That'd be pretty decent. Now, one thing I generally do, I'm dialing this tone in to taste right now. Yeah. So, but if I was actually going to track this, I'd kind of roll the highs off a little bit. Um, and even when I play live, um, even when I play live, I tend to roll the highs off a little bit, uh, mostly because I would rather have the sound man try to brighten it up than try to try to dull it down. Um, so, and then once you double track it or whatever you're going to do with it in your mix. There you go. There's a nice, uh, a nice Mesa. We're going to do this here. GZ recto. Yeah, cool. Okay. So another trick you can do. Uh, another trick you can do, and I do it when I'm recording a Mesa, um, or if I'm playing live, whatever, uh, if I'm actually using a rectifier, a lot of the boogie amps actually, one of the things you can do is, is and people seem to forget that guitar is a mid-range instrument, right? Um, a lot of the Mesa stuff is inherently scooped, and people will will drive that sound home, right? They're going to scoop that EQ even more. So by the time it gets done, you just have this huge push uh, of inaudible uh, bottom and top fizz. So not bottom fizz, but top fizz, bottom bleh, flub. So um, you can dial that out, but one of the one of the surefire ways to tighten up uh, any amp really, but um, especially helps with the uh, rectifiers is to throw a tube screamer in the mix. Oops. And then we'll dump the gain back out of there. play that'd be even better huh So that's not bad right there. That's a good starting point. So um, obviously for me, next would be to double track it and see how it sounds. My guess would be it's probably still pretty bright. Um, That's not bad right there. We're going to save this. GZ Recto. Go get it on my website. Let's say, let's just say for a minute, you want to have a lead tone. Now, one of the things I will do for a lead, we're going to throw a delay in there. Let's just go with a simple delay. <laughs> Pull that back. 
back a little bit. And I'm also going to throw a reverb in there. Okay, let's see. Let's throw, throw a room in there. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to pull this down. I want this to open up a little bit. Not a bad uh, lead sound right there. Pretty sexy, if you ask me. Still got some gate issues. Gear Zombie Recto Lead. Download down there. Go. All right, so that's enough for video one. We're going to move on to video two. I don't know what I'm going to do next. We'll do, we'll grab another amp model. We're going to just do a bunch of videos on these because uh, this is fun for me. So hopefully you enjoy watching them while we dial these in. Uh, go grab the patches for GZ Recto and GZ Recto Lead. Got to come up with something better. Um, and then dial them into your taste and let me know what you think. If they stink, I can take it. I'm an adult. If you like it, hit subscribe, hit the like button, send it to your moms. Facebook.com, Gear Zombie, Twitter.com, Gear Zombie, wherever you can find Gear Zombie, find it and push buttons. Later. <laughs>